Hello and welcome to another episode of Azure Snippets. It's been a little while since the last episode, apologies for that, but we'll get right back onto it. So this week we're going to have a look at um, doing some Terraform. And this is going to be the, probably the first in a few episodes where we're going to look at using Terraform for deploying resources into Azure. Um, but first, before we do any real resources, we're going to look at laying some foundation. And so this particular episode, we're going to have a look at how we set up Terraform to use Azure as the back end for storing state. So if you're not familiar with Terraform, when you uh, use Terraform to query and to deploy resources to Azure, it maintains what's called a state file. So the state file has information that maps your, your configuration against the actual resources in Azure. It's how Terraform knows what's been deployed, what's currently in place, what needs to be removed, replaced, edited, and so on. So the state file is really quite critical to maintaining your deployments. By default, when you set up Terraform locally on your machine, it's just going to store the state file on your machine, which is fine if it's just you messing about. Um, but as soon as you start trying to do this into in production, and as soon as you get multiple people trying to work on the same deployments, that really doesn't work anymore. You've also got the issue with potentially storing credentials and, and secrets and so on in the state file because they, they do end up there when you do deployments. And so it needs to be somewhere more secure and more accessible than on your machine. And so Terraform provides the ability to use a number of different places as a remote state storage that everyone can share. Um, if you're using Azure, the obvious solution for that is to use the Azure storage state option. And that's what we're going to do in the rest of this video is set up a remote state in Azure so that anyone in our team can use it and we can store our state securely. So the first thing we need is a storage account to actually store the state in. So we're going to create a new account. You could use an existing one, but we're going to create a new one here to keep it clean. And we're going to call it Terraform State. Let's see if that name's available. Um, standard, standard storage is fine. We we'll use V2. I'm just going to use locally redundant. If you were using this for production and wanted to make sure this was uh, geo redundant, then you, you could use the geo redundant option. And we'll keep it at the hot tier. And we want to make sure secure transfer is enabled. We want. Um, at the moment, we're going to leave it accessible to all networks because we're going to be you hitting this from, from my desktop machine. And we don't need any tanks at this point, so we'll go ahead and create that storage account. So that deployment's finished now. So if you have a look at our storage account, and we need to create a container in here that's going to store the state. So we'll just call it state, that's fine. Okay, and that's the storage account ready to go. Over Visual Studio Code, we've got a very simple Terraform file. All we're doing here is creating a resource group. Um, but the first thing we need to do is configure our back end. So this section here, our Terraform section with the back end, we're configuring it to use Azure RM as the back end. Let's use Azure storage for the state storage. And then we just need to give it the name of the storage account and the name of the container we want to store the state in. And then just to give us something to do, we've got a a resource down here that's going to create a resource group called state demo. Now in this example, you noticed I haven't given it any credentials to actually access the storage account. So when we run this in a second, we're going to run it through the CLI, which is logged in as me, and it's going to use the credentials of the CLI to do that. We'll have a look at some alternative methods in a minute. So over the CLI, the first thing we need to do is actually run the terraform init command, which does all the, will do all the usual things of pulling in uh, any modules or anything need, but this is what will set up our state file initially in the storage account. So if we run Terraform in it, you see here the first thing it's doing is initializing the back end. And as you saw there, we got an error. This is a mistake on my part. If we're going to have Terraform use my credentials from the CLI to actually access the storage account, we need to specify the resource group in our Terraform file. Otherwise, we need to specify the access key or the SAS token. Otherwise, it doesn't know where to access our storage account. So if we go back to VS Code, we just need to add in a line in here that contains the resource group name as well. And if we hop back to the CLI, we can again run Terraform init. And that's going to check to see that we made that change and go ahead and create the state file. So we're now ready to actually do some work. So we're going to go ahead and clean that up and then do Terraform plan, and that should tell us what needs to be done. It should just be creating that resource group. So we 
can see from the result here, we need to actually create a resource group, which is what we expected, nothing else. So we'll go ahead and run that, do a Terraform apply. And there we go, that's gone and created the resource group. And you can see that's released our state. So what we should now find is if we go over to the Azure portal, we've got our state container here. We can have a look inside. And you can see we've got our terraform.tf state file. And you can actually have a look at that if you want to see what's inside it. I'm going to open that in VS Code. And this is what the state file looks like. So it's all JSON in the HashiCorp format. And it's just going to contain information about what we've been doing. So all the information it's really got in the moment is about the resource group that we created. And as we add and remove more resources and so on, this state file will get amended. And any of our team who wants to come along and work on the environment can use the same state file and we can all be working on a consistent platform that's stored securely in Azure Blob Storage. It's encrypted at rest. It's protected to only be accessible by people who've got access. And that will, will work great. Now we're just going to hop back to the Terraform website and look at a couple of other examples of how you can connect to this state in blob storage. So this first one here is the one we use where we're using the credentials stored in my Azure CLI. Um, and I don't, need to, I don't need to provide any extra information. That works fine, but obviously that only works where I'm running it on my local machine and I don't need access to anything else. When you come to putting things in production, what you might find is you want your build process to start doing your Terraform deployment. Um, and therefore, you might want to use instead of credentials supplied through the CLI is a managed service identity. And so you can instead change this uh, back end section to instead of using my credentials, you can use this use MSI flag, set that to true, and provide it with a subscription ID and tenant ID of the resources, and your and your build agent will be able to log in using managed service identity, assuming it's got an identity assigned to it and it has the rights to do whatever your Terraform file is looking to do. Alternatively, you can use the storage account key if you just want to keep it simple and use that. And you could even have that pull, pull out of key vault for you. Or along the same line, you could use a SAS token rather than the actual storage account key. Either of those options will work, again, as long as they have access to the right resources. So a number of different options depending on how you want to run your deployments. So now we're in a good place. We've got our state set up and we're ready to go and do some more advanced Terraform in the future. I hope this has been useful. I'll see you next time on Azure Snippet.